Good morning, I'm Mike McLaughlin with Hydrotex. We are here in Imperial, Nebraska today with Delbert Bussell of Bussell Farms. Delbert, his sons and grandson represent second, third, and fourth generation farmers. The Bussells farm approximately 6,000 acres of corn, beans, and wheat with 3,500 of those acres under center pivot irrigation. On today's episode, we are partnering with Delbert to learn about how to properly lubricate a center pivot irrigation system. That's all coming up on this episode of Lube Insight by Hydrotex. During the growing season, when, when one of these gearboxes go down and, and you know, you're needing to get water on your fields, uh, you know, downtime is obviously a critical factor. You mentioned that, uh, say, if you, you uh, check it at 7 o'clock and it's running and then for some reason or other you have a, a gearbox that goes down or a motor that goes down and it shuts off till you check it again the next morning, that lapse in time can be a real problem. Uh, definitely. Definitely. And, um, and actually changing one of these gearboxes out in the field when it's been running where you obviously have water and you have mud. So you have to contend with actually taking a replacement gearbox out there um, through the field, through probably maybe sometimes tall corn or, or other crops. So you have, to, you have to take in a new gearbox. You have to take in a, a jack and a block to put the jack on because obviously the ground's wet and muddy. You have to jack this tower up and then you have to have the tools to take this wheel off so you can actually replace the gearbox. Correct. So, uh, and, and obviously you can't drive out to that sometimes. You have to actually manually carry that in. And you were saying how far is it from here to maybe uh, a, middle, a middle tower on one of these? You're talking about how far? The middle tower on this particular system is a quarter of a mile to it. So it's a long ways to carry that. So yes. there's some serious pain involved in changing one of these out during during the season. It's more than you realize because you're not walking on ground like we're standing on here. You're walking in mud, and you try walking in mud carrying something. It's just not as yeah. easy to do. Yeah, 80 or 90 pound gearboxes, jacks, uh, blocks, right. tools. It's a lot of work. It's a pain. Plus, <laughs> plus the fact that uh, you really need it to be running and putting water on the crop. Correct. Certain times, it's very critical. It's very critical. So, Delbert, when you come out uh, at the beginning of every season to do your normal maintenance on, uh, say, particular this particular tower or any any tower, one of the things you come in and do is you're going to check air pressure in your tires. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And then uh, you you explained that with the Hydrotex pivot grease, unless you see a leaky seal you feel very confident that you don't even need to open the plugs and, and check fluid levels. You know it's there, you feel comfortable with Correct. that. Correct. We don't open the box up any or check the bottom. Uh, you see here on the gearbox, if it's leaking oil, it'll run down around here, if you can see right in here. But this is a seal where it'll leak out of. And if you see dirt stuck to that, you know you got a leaky seal. Okay. And there's also a seal on the other side of this gearbox that's got a cover over it. But as it's just like this, and you can also see on this center motor back here, it's the same seals here. There's one on each end of it. Okay, so we talked earlier about your, about your drive motor here, and, and we still have to kind of determine what OEM specs would be. But, but uh, in the past, you, you've, you've got a lot of uh, your drive motors here with this gear set with the pivot grease in it also. And, and uh, you're saying that takes about what, about two quarts two quarts approximately yes all of ours we've got uh, hydrotex pivot grease in all of our center ones all of, all of your center yes. drive units too yes. and you do the same thing at the beginning of the season you come here and you're looking Just for you're, you're looking for any kind of uh, dirt buildup or, or checking for any kind of a leak on both sides because there's yes. correct if you've got a leakage and you got much oil that's run out there and sit there all winter and the dirt's blowing there will be dirt buildup on it and you can tell just walking up if you got dirt build up in there. So that's a you've real telltale a sign oh, yeah. when you walk up when you see dirt on it. Then you, you're going to know you've got a you've got a seal you've problem. Got a bad seal. Yeah. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. And uh, typically these take about two quarts of uh, of lubricant or uh, uh, pivot grease, and the uh, gearboxes take roughly about five quarts. Yeah. So I, I routinely just kind of figure about three gallon to a tower. 
is what it takes, and it won't take any more than that. Okay. You'll usually have a little bit left, but that's that's real close. Three gallons of pivot grease per tower. Per tower. So it's yes. really easy to figure out, you know, how much pivot grease a man would need based on the number of towers Correct. that his center pivot system has. Yes. Okay. And they're all going to be within a half a quart of each other. They're okay. All real, real close. Okay, Deborah, we're out here on the very end tower on one of your pivots, and uh, it's uh, this is a particular gearbox that you have scheduled to do maintenance on at this time. And uh, so, kind of walk us through, you know, the steps uh, that that you have to go through to change out the lubricant in this particular gearbox. Well, first thing you got to do is you've got to drain the box out. Now, I've already done that, as you can see because it takes a while for the old oil to totally drain out. I like to pull the plug and leave it out overnight. And that way you get a good drain. Get a good drain. Do you leave the plug completely out or yeah. do you leave it in with just tap? You leave it completely out. I just leave out. it completely out. Okay. Now, if you're in the sandy ground and you get wind, you maybe should pull the plug out and let this is a good portion of it get out right away and put it in loose so maybe so it can still drip out because what you do not want to do is have that plug out and have wind come up in the sand and whip sand up into that box. Okay, so Delbert, on this particular gearbox, uh, uh, this is a new box, so you're doing that first year change on it, and uh, OEMs require that you run a gear oil in it the first season to get the rough edges off of the gears and to get those, those metal parts and pieces and any debris that's in there to get that out after that first season before you start the second season with fresh lubrication. Is that correct? Correct. And right now you've still just got it uh, uh, loose enough to where you can... loose so dirt wouldn't get in it. There right. might be a drop come out of it, but not very much. So even after draining it overnight, you can still see there's just, uh, just a little bit of uh, gear lubricant still coming out of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing you might want to see, that's what come out of it one year. <laughs> and that well, was that, what? That was what, brand new oil. So you can see that this that this gear oil is really it's it's uh, thick. it's, it's, it's gotten real thick, and there's a lot of a lot sludge. of gunk, a lot of sludge in it, even after one season. So you can see that uh, the OEM is 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 making the right recommendation. They want that uh, they want that gear lubricant out of there to get that sludge and get those uh, particles that were in that gearbox out after the first year. It's a farmer's advantage to drain that after the first year for the longevity of your box to get the filings out of it. To get the filings just, out of it. it. To me, it's it's just a no-brainer. You change them at the end of the first year and whatever you go back with, I recommend the Hydrotex, but you go back with the new oil. Okay, the bottom line is this gearbox has been on uh, one year. Uh, for basically one year, which is what the OEM rec so you're doing what the OEM recommends, and that's draining the uh, the the gear oil that came factory filled in it, so you can get uh, fresh lubricant in there beginning of its of its typical second season. Correct. Uh, we just got a 55 gallon here that I'm going to fill this box with. This is the end I use to fill out of the bottom because you just turn it over and stick it up under the bottom. Turn this valve on here. Now, this is an air pump in there. I got to hook the air hose up to it, and then you turn the air hose on, and you walk under there. You turn the valve, you fill it, you shut the valve back off, and go to the next gearbox. So open your pickup and go on to the next one. And you're going to be filling these gearboxes from the bottom. So you've got a special uh, tip uh, made here. <laughs> what what did you do there? Because that looks like uh, a cut off uh, valve stem is what it looks like. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> and that's the best thing I can find because they're tapered. They're sturdy, and they take it. Okay. I've tried pieces of foam. I've tried lots of different things, and you get leakage coming out, and you got a mess. These fit up in there real good. Okay. And, and really obvious for good. obvious reason, you've got your uh, you've got your fill uh, uh, curved. curved, so it's easier to get get on that bottom uh, get uh, on that bottom. Yeah. Uh, you've deal. got you got to have a curve because you crawl underneath there. You're sitting like this. You stick that up. You're there. holding it up there, and you have to keep pressure on there yes. while you're putting this in. Yes. Typically with, with this setup, uh, what what kind of uh, pump do you have here? You can't just take any oil pump. You've got to have what they call as a grease pump. 
It's got the, so this is a grease pump. Yes. Okay. To pump this viscosity and this thickness of product. Okay. A regular oil pump will not do it. Will not do it. So they actually yeah. need a grease pump if they're going to pump it with a uh, with an air drum. setup system yes. out of a, out of a drum. <laughs> That in there. Turn the bottle on. One thing you want to do before you pull that out from the bottom, stick your plug in the top, and that'll help make an air lock so it does not run out as fast. You're supposed to do a lot better job. I haven't done this for a while. It took a while to get that plug in. Mike cleaned all the dirt off of it and I couldn't get it to start in. Now I'll open this up and then you can film the grease. It's actually how full it got in the box. You'll be able to see it. Okay. You know, what, what causes the seals to go, go out? And, and we know it's typically seals don't, you know, crack and, and dry out or break or, or wear out from the outside in. It's from the inside out. And when you go in with just a, uh, a conventional gear lubricant or a non-synthetic or, uh, or not a high quality uh, gear oil, you're going to have the presence of, of some sulfur in that, in that oil, in that base oil. And when you have condensation, which you're going to have with water, and you have oxygen, you have the presence of sulfuric acid in there. And, and that, that working on your seals typically is going to cause you some problems in the future whereas when you go in with a with a full synthetic product that starts out with you know basically a, a pharmaceutical grade base stock oil to begin with you just don't ne you don't get nearly that acidic action in there that, that tends to cause those seals to go out I mean would you agree with that or yes. elaborate on it a little bit no you're correct on that you could have a seal go out though because I was just figuring up the other day uh, half of our systems are 1980 systems. What are those? 30 some years old. You will have to see all that in just, 30 just, some years. Just, just normal age, way, then. yes, normal <laughs> just age can go out. So that's why we look to see. But if we just don't have any problems with that, I mean, yeah, you might find one or two. But it's just normal for a 35 year old system to have a seal to start to leak. The main, the main benefit that I see to the with the Hydrotex grease is. And when we go to this other system up here, we'll show you on that. That shaft, even if the oil level gets below the top of that shaft, that top of that shaft will still be covered with grease, and it'll sit there all winter. The next spring, you go out and pull that cover, and it is still covered with grease. Now, that means that bearing that sticks up higher than that shaft has got grease on that shaft, on that bearing. And a lot of times the main problem in one of these, the bearing will go out in the end and, the, and we don't have it now, but used to have, you get a drop of condensation on top of that bearing in the winter and it sits there for six months and it rusts a little bit. When it starts running, that will take that bearing out. And with the Hydrotex grease in there, these boxes, I can't do it, we will go to a valley one that you can pull the top on and you can see the gears and that down in there and uh, you can see what I'm talking about with it staying on there. I'm taking the lid off of the box now so you can look down inside the valley box so you can see what the grease does down in there. So this is uh, this is a Delbert, this is a valley gear box. It's uh, had the Hydrotex pivot grease in it. Do you do you have any idea how many years this has been in here? This pivot was put in in 2002, I believe. So it's had pivot grease since 2003. So it's probably been changed one time. one time. So this would be the second round of Hydrotex pivot grease in it. So see this in here now has been in there probably. So by taking the course. taking this top uh, top off of this gearbox, we're actually going to get to see right down into the worm gear set. Is that correct? Correct. Now, when I told you that it looked a little funny, mm -hmm. this is the one that went through and stood under water for at least three or four days. I'm saying the water was up over the tires. On it and it's set in the lagoon. Like oh, this is a good there. shot here. Yeah. This is a good shot here. Look at this, guys. This is a great shot right here. You can see the drops of water in there. You can actually see the condensation in there, but you can actually see oh, yeah. the, the pivot grease still has 
that top worm gear coated. So even with moisture in there, we don't have, we don't have corrosion and all that going on. If you were if you were doing maintenance, if if for some reason you were doing maintenance on this uh, gearbox here at the beginning of the season, and you open this up and you saw what you see right now, would you be alarmed that you have wear going on in there, or do you feel pretty comfortable with what you see there, Delvin? I don't think there's any wear. I don't think it's hurt anything. I think this system is probably in line for this fall to be totally changed. Okay. And we haven't looked at it since we changed it before. So we're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, maybe five or six years since you've even pulled this cover off and took a look in there. Well, yeah. Five, so, so it gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling that you can look down in there and not see any exposed okay. metal. I What's got off. that in there is because of the water sitting in the water underwater for. Yeah, this is. At least, we have to remember this is the. Uh, or four days. This is the tower that went underwater went in the lagoon. Yeah, it went swimming for a while. So that might have some reason that this is a little bit more discolored than than it, some of them. It might have sat in there a week before we got it out of I don't know. Yeah. You know, that was too many years ago. That's, uh, but that's why this gearbox looks this way. Normally, you won't see any look like that. But this one I thought was a good one to show you guys. Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, even with uh, the lubricant level being probably a little bit lower than you would like to see it, you still feel comfortable though that uh, that the gear that the uh, that the pivot grease is in there. The Hydrotex pivot grease that's in there is continually keeping those uh, that uh, that gear set up. Right. Covered. You know, completely it's coated. With oil. It's, it's completely with oil. coated with uh, lubricant. Yeah. We appreciate Delbert giving us the opportunity to uh, come and learn something today. Delbert has been a Hydrotex user for gosh, how many years now, Delbert, have you used Hydrotex? 25 or 30. 25 or 30 Long years. <laughs> well, we appreciate your patronage and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to come out here and, uh, and learn from our customers. Uh, we found, well, we found that uh, that's the best way for us to uh, share information with other customers and, uh, and help our sales force become more efficient at uh, being lubrication solution partners with the, uh, with the ag producers all over the United States. So, Delbert, thank you so much. Well, I enjoyed having all you guys out and meeting all the guys, and it was a fun time. Be sure and check out hydrotexlube.com for more information on what we learned today on this edition of Lube Insight, sponsored by Hydrotex.